So what's going on guys, my name's Chopper, and welcome everybody to today's PUBG video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, and in this video we're going to be talking about the brand new PUBG update that changed a lot of stuff, added some really cool new features, rebalanced some things, and then also we're going to talk about some things that we're going to expect to come in the future. So this is going to be a really exciting episode, and I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, please make sure to leave a like rating on the video, that would be absolutely incredible, as well as make sure you are subscribed if you are brand new to the channel so you don't miss out on any more PUBG content like this, and uh, I would appreciate that a lot. But yeah, we've got quite an agenda to get through today, so sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first here, one of the biggest and most important things in this patch note that's going to be coming very, very soon is a loot balance to Vikendi for the second time over. They've already gone over once, but they're going over again to add a couple new guns, some new attachments, and overall rebalance the loot as a whole to make the gameplay a little bit more varied. Now, I'm going to basically go through all the changes that have been made to this map. So first of all, PUBG had ended up adding a brand new gun to Vikendi that had never been there before, and this is the MK47 Mutant. Now, I actually, when I read this, I kind of forgot that the Mutant wasn't a part of Vikendi candy already just because typically I don't run the gun when I'm playing other maps but also at the same time I actually had never ended up seeing it in Vikendi and that never crossed my mind until they mentioned it but not only are they adding the mutant but they're adding a couple of attachments to the map as well the thumb grip the half grip and the laser sight which again these I also forgot were I guess not part of the map this whole time so that's good if you're a fan of that weapon then you can start using it in Vikendi if that's your thing now they've also removed two weapons from Vikendi which this is pretty interesting to me they got rid of the Winchester and the R45 now obviously these guns aren't very popular as is, but the fact that they're going to do away with them in this map is uh, is really surprising. At least the R45, to me, I felt like could have been belonged there, and I don't think it really needed to be removed, but hey, so be it. If for some reason you're disappointed about that, though, don't be too sad, because they're getting rid of these weapons to make room for certain new ones, and uh, I guess increase spawn rates of other things. Now, in order to get the loot on Vikendi balanced, similar to where it is on Sanok now, and then also Erangel for that matter, they have increased the spawn rates of a lot of popular weapons. So, for example, the ARs almost spawn at one and a half times what they used to, which is a pretty good increase. DMRs now spawn twice as often, which is, uh, again, a very needed change. And get this, sniper rifles spawn increased by sevenfold. That's kind of a lot. Seven times increase for sniper rifles could be pretty game-changing, but I, I, I honestly think it'll be for the better, because before, there were hardly any sniper rifles to be found on this map entirely, and so if we're getting a very increased spawn rate in both the DMRs and snipers, it's going to make the map feel a little bit more welcoming. Now, of course, as you guys know, having sniper rifles rifles but without scopes to really use them with is is kind of pointless and it's it's really worthless to be honest so what they've also done in addition to this is increase the spawn rate of high powered scopes as well so i believe this includes anything from like four times up the four six and eight should spawn maybe a little bit more on this map to uh, accompany the new spawn snipe rifles that are going to be here so overall this is going to be a lot more like long range engagement kind of map and to me that's what vikendi felt like it was set up for anyways but the loot just didn't really complement it well so this could really change the way that vikendi plays for the better. I'm, I'm actually like full in favor of this loot change. It was similar to the Erangel thing where I was skeptical about it. I thought it would change the way the map plays, but it, at least as far as I'm concerned, it ended up being a really good patch. Now, another change is coming that you guys might be a little bit upset with. I'm not sure how you're going to feel about this, but the Vikendi loot cave. Do you remember the secret little loot cave that you could break into? Some of you may know about that. Some of you may not, but basically there was a spot you could break into in the map, a secret cave and to where there would be two care packages in there loaded with weapons and armor that whoever was able to take that over and escape would likely end up with those weapons. Now, since it's not really much of a secret anymore, and a lot of players have been using this as an area just to play in Vikendi, they've taken out the drops of this loot cave. So this means after this patch from here on out, there's going to be no more care packages spawning in this cave, which is kind of a bummer, but I, I do get it at the end of the day. But they said that they have replaced it with high tier, high quality loot in place of it. So there probably is going to be maybe some level three armor laying around, uh, some non care package weapons that are probably pretty solid though. Uh, overall, I would expect a lot of sniper rifles and stuff like that to spawn in here, but unfortunately, there's going to be no more crates, which is a little bit of a bummer, like I said, but you guys can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And then finally, for the last big update they made to Vikendi, they changed the blue zone, which, thank God, honestly, that was one of the things that was keeping me from enjoying it, maybe as much as I could have. It was it was just the way that this, the, the games were paced because of the blue zone, the fact that it hardly ever moved into any varied locations, it would always end up relatively center, was kind of annoying. So what they ended up doing with the blue zone is make it spawn at least the first 
first circle in more varied places and they also delayed the time that it takes for the next circles to move so this means the paces of matches is going to be much much quicker which i think vikendi really needs and uh, hopefully this is a very good change so i'm excited to play vikendi now with this and i really think it'll bring it up to par with the rest of the maps i i, I think from a design standpoint vikendi probably is the best map but it had some problems holding it back such as the loot and then like the weird circle like algorithms and stuff like that so i'm glad they got that sorted out and i'm definitely looking forward to playing it on this patch vikendi seems like it's going to be an amazing map now all right now moving on here a brand new tactical map marker system has been added so basically what this is going to allow you to do is set up different markers that you and your team can see that are going to signify different things for example you can use this tactical map marker to call out loot that's in a certain building and tag it up on the map or tag out different enemies or show danger to be uh like across a certain way and this is basically going to increase the communication between teammates and uh it's a good idea however using it in practice from a lot of players have reported that it doesn't really work very well and you're really just better off telling your teammate verbally stuff or just like pinging on the map and they're going to find whatever it is anyway so apparently it needs a little bit of work but you guys i encourage you to go out and test it and then give your feedback on it too now, for some quality of life changes that have been made, they've adjusted the way that the grenade crosshair looks, and so you can see it on the screen right now, basically what this is going to look like. Now, I don't know if this change was absolutely necessary, to be honest with you. I mean, it is definitely something that will make the game feel more complete, and uh, it is a very intuitive kind of system, but I don't know if it's necessary, because you can kind of tell whether your grenade is going to be overhand or underhand just based on your player's character model. So, I mean, it, it, it's cool, but I don't know if this is going to be very game-changing, but hey, I'm always down for having more quality of life fixes, and this is a pretty good one. Now, another thing that got adjusted with quality of life is something that I really think is a great change, and this is to the minimap. And so now when you're playing squads, if you're playing duos, you can see where your teammate is, and especially like their directional arrow, if they're too far away from you on the map. So you can get a little bit of a better idea of where your teammate's located, what kind of situation they might be in and everything like that. And so while this is like a very, very small change, I think it's something that players are really going to like, and uh, they won't even notice that they're using it. Like it's going to be something that you just appreciate, but you don't even realize that they that this is a brand new thing. And then we also got some changes again to the flare gun this thing has been tweaked so much but this one really isn't that big of a deal it's basically just kind of having ease of use and uh, because a lot of players i've noticed in public games have been using the flare gun wrong they've been calling it in too early or they've been not shooting it high enough like i don't think it was very clear on how to use this weapon properly and so what they've done with this update is try to make that a little bit better they've increased like the crosshair and made it into a circle and so this essentially tells you exactly when you're in the green light to launch this off and then get a reward from it so as you can see right here the ui has been a little bit more set up to make sure that people don't use this incorrectly and ended up wasting the flare gun as i really think this has been a big problem recently i don't know about you guys but a lot of people just don't seem to know how to use the flare gun or when to call it in and fair enough it wasn't really apparent from the beginning unless you really did your research so this should hopefully help a lot and i think this is a great flare gun change now ladies and gentlemen we make our way to the most interesting part of this update you remember in previous videos we had been talking about some leaked kits that are coming to the game such as like a vehicle and armor repair kit i've gone into those at length in previous videos but we actually have two of them in the game right now we have the hemostatic device which i talked about earlier but it's called something way different now this is now the critical response kit and then we also have the mechanics toolbox which is the vehicle repair kit now i want to give a big shout out to player ign for getting these to work in game and figuring out what exactly they do so the critical response kit is going to res your teammates a lot faster and that was something that i called in a previous video i figured this was going to be like some sort of revive kit that was either going to pick your teammate up with full health or revive them faster or something like that and from the description it says the critical response kit when used can revive a teammate in one second now these like weigh a lot in your backpack so it's not like you're going to just be strapped with these and carrying a bunch around so use them scarcely but this seems like a really cool idea to me but it's important to keep in mind that both this kit and also the vehicle repair kit are only in custom games right now these are not in public matches we can probably assume that they'll maybe wake make their way to public games eventually but as of right now they are only in custom games so don't worry if you're kind of skeptical about these being in publics right now we can probably expect these to hit public matches at least some point a little bit down the road but right now like i said they're only in custom games now when it comes to the vehicle repair kit which again falls in the same boat this one's pretty self-explanatory this one just takes it's like a kit that allows you to repair your vehicle's durability now it's also been discovered that it will not replace any lost fuel that's what the gas can is for and it's also found out that it will not replace any broken tires which actually kind of surprised me i figured the biggest benefit to having this like toolbox would be to fix any lost tires because those are irreplaceable you know what i mean so at the end of the day uh it only is going to repair your durability so i wouldn't expect this to be any sort of overpowered item either this one seems like a, a pretty cool change for the folks who feel like they want to use it i'm absolutely all for it and last but not least ladies and gentlemen the final thing i want to talk about is actually a leak that's not 
part of this patch, but will likely be coming in a patch later down the road. And I want to give a big shout out to all the news is good news. I'm going to have all these guys' links down below in the description. And he ended up discovering this, which is essentially a radio system. Now, from my understanding, this is going to be similar to the ping system from Apex Legends. Now, we hardly know anything about it right now, but from my understanding, this will probably be like some sort of communication, like vocal thing that you can use with your teammates, just like a quick little ping system. So you can say th things like affirmative, okay, roger that, copy that, enemy here, enemy spotted, and enemy contact. Stuff like that, which is basically to help the communication, maybe in, in sync with the tactical map marker, maybe using this both will allow you to communicate as smoothly as possible. I'm not really sure, but this is something that will probably be coming later on down the road, some sort of like ping slash radio system. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I will keep you guys updated on that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did go on to, to enjoy today's video, please make sure to leave a like rating on the video. Subscribe if you are brand new, as I will keep you updated on everything that comes up for PUBG and that uh, you won't want to miss it here. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out my second channel. Link is in the description down below, and I'll see you all on the next live stream or the next video. Take it easy, guys, and peace out.